Richard, we all have questions. We started when we were maybe pre-teenagers and we continue through our lives and our careers as scientists. And I'm fascinated by the different ways of thinking that uh, scientists and philosophers, theologians for that matter, have about ultimate questions. So when you think about the kinds of questions that you can ask, not necessarily the ones you can answer, but the ones you can ask, what do you say? Well, let's see. I think, I think we'd be interested in what is the theory of everything? Is there a single theory that we can develop that'll explain, explain all the phenomena that we see, all the forces that we see? Um, what's that theory like? What does it predict when you apply it to cosmology, when you apply it to black holes? Is there time travel possible? Um, is the, uh, do we live, uh, how does our universe uh, develop? Can there be other universes built on different principles once we understand that? Um, we'd like to know about the future of the universe. Uh, we'd like to know um, what's going to happen to the human race in the future. Um, how long are we going to last? What things will we discover? We'd like to know about life elsewhere in the universe. Is there intelligent life elsewhere in the universe? Uh, will we contact them? Will they contact us? Um, uh, we have the idea that there are multiple universes, all obeying the same sort of general laws of physics. Um, can we imagine other things beyond the our physical universe, other universes that obey different laws of physics, different, completely different theories and so forth? Um, ultimately, I guess we a question you can ask, which is a theological question, I think, is, um, well, why do we have a universe instead of just no universe at all? I mean, once you have the universe and you say, well, here's how things behave, you can try to discover how it got started and what laws make it work and so forth. Um, but you can imagine there just being nothing, so we don't have nothing, and so why is that? <laughs> let's, uh, let, let's take a look at some of these. Uh, it's fascinating the way you asked the question, um, uh, is there a theory of everything, not what is the theory of everything? Because the question is, is there a single comprehensive theory that can explain it? Because there are two possibilities, there is or there isn't. Yes. And if there isn't, that may mean that the laws of physics are more randomized and uh, uh, more uh, um, uh, general and, and, and are expressed in different manners, maybe in different universes in some way. Um, is, is that a bifurcation? Is there a theory of everything? And then what is the theory of everything? Well, I'm hopeful that there would be. <laughs> um, uh, Richard Feynman said we've been going about 400 years. We started with Newton and mm -hmm. Maxwell and mm -hmm. then quantum mechanics. Uh, and he thought there might be at most maybe another thousand years of such progress. Again, uh -huh. we'd be somewhere in the middle. Uh -huh. um, the, um, it might be that the, as you explore more and more phenomena, the laws of physics get more and more complex, mm -hmm. he said, and you will just find a law of diminishing <laughs> returns where more and more complicated laws are explaining less and less additional <laughs> facts, but you can keep on working, but mm -hmm. no one else is much interested. <laughs> um, or you can actually find a theory of everything and say, uh, great, we've we've got it. This explains mm -hmm. everything, you know, uh, in the uh, that we can see in the physical universe. So he thought that either of those two ways, we might have our answer in a thousand years, either diminishing returns of, or we'd find uh, um, a theory that would actually um, explain the phenomena that we're seeing. And so we're searching diligently for that today. I, I listen to all your questions, and, I, and, and they, each one of them are overwhelming in their, in their power to, uh, to excite, uh, to, to, to give us a, a sense of awe and majesty and what it's all about. But I'd like to try to categorize it in, in, in some way. And it, it seems like, uh, first approximation, I have three general sets. One is, is based on a theory of everything. Is there the fundamental physics? Because out of that, I can explain not just matter, but I can possibly explain the origin of the universe, time travel at the beginning of the universe, as, as, as you've uh, explored. 
whole, a whole array of things out of that uh, potential quantum gravity, et cetera. Then uh, uh, at, at the other extreme, you've asked the, what I would think is the ultimate question, you know, why is there something rather than nothing? And maybe that is forever outside the realm of science. Maybe that's in a different realm or impossible to answer one, one way or the other. Then there's this middle ground, which is basically what is the, what is the role of, 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 of human beings or sentient life in the universe? Are there other uh, um, beings uh, like us that we can communicate with? Is, is that uh, yes. uh, is a way to look of, at things? I think, those are the, <laughs> I think those are the three arenas, and they're, they're all... Um, um, very interesting, each in their each in their each in their own right, and can have um, big discoveries in each. What do you think the future may hold in the next hundred years or thousand years in each of them? What what, what would you say? Well, um, I'd be interested to see on the why the universe exists <laughs> rather than nothing. Whether we make much, the theologians would say we haven't made too much. Pro, scientists have made too much progress in that. Um, the the um, uh, the extraterrestrial life. Um, we'd like to know if there's life elsewhere. We'd like to know if there's intelligent life elsewhere. Um, we're still sitting on our home planet. So if we're <laughs> typical, other extraterrestrials are similarly sitting on their home planet. You don't expect to be in a tiny civilization when there are vast ones around. So finding the other intelligent life may be more difficult in the time we have and while our species is still alive than, than, than you might uh, uh, hope. But that's an extremely interesting question. Um, isn't uh, how often does this life itself develop? That may be more common than intelligent life. Mm -hmm. And then how often ultimately does intelligent life develop? Um, and on the theory of everything, I think, I think hopefully we will make progress because we, we have made significant steps in the past. Newton's theory of gravity was the first really law of mm -hmm. physics that mm -hmm. we had uh, that could explain, predict future events. So could we, first time we understood gravity. Maxwell came along, we could understand electromagnetism. Quantum mechanics came along, we can understand the, the, the microscopic world. Um, general relativity came along, we can understand gravity and curved space-time. Um, so since we've made these several epic-making discoveries, I suspect there's a few <laughs> epic-making discoveries in the future, maybe more than one, on a similar time scale. And uh, so I would say we have a good chance of making uh, a new plateau of understanding, whether it's the final plateau, <laughs> I don't know, but achieving a new plateau of understanding that's greater than what we have now that would unify our understanding of the strong and weak nuclear forces and the electromagnetism and gravity, Einstein's dream of an ultimate theory.